Hi, today we're going to learn about the scientific method. We've been learning about bits and pieces of it without actually stating the word scientific method over the last couple of days, but today we're going to focus on what that is and what it means. So first we're going to go over a definition for the scientific method. The scientific method is an organized way of gathering information to learn about a topic or to answer a question. There are different steps that make up the scientific method. One step is to make observations. Maybe you have noticed that there's one corner in your backyard on the lawn that's dead. The rest of the grass is green and you wonder why might that be dead. Maybe you have some ideas and so you come up with a question. Um, why is that piece of the lawn dead? Does it have something to do with maybe my dog? Um, next you would write a hypothesis. So this is where you are writing out your question and you are going to be able to test what you think might be occurring. You're going to then create a controlled experiment. You're going to write out the steps that you're going to take to be able to test what is going on. Now, think about an experiment. You guys all probably have heard about getting a plant and putting it in a room and playing different music to it. So rock music or classical music or hip hop or country, etc. And so maybe you have plants in the room, but you're playing music to all of them, the different music. Um, to one is listening to rock, one is listening to country. But then you um, have one of those plants you have um, with no music at all. That would be the control, because maybe music, they're all growing the same height with the different types of music. And you want to know, well, is it really the music that's causing them to grow this rate? And so you want to have one that is set aside, that no music is being played to it, so that you can see what's really going on. So that's what a control means in an experiment. After you've created your experiment, you're going to conduct that experiment and gather data. And you want to organize that data in data tables so it's nice and neat and easy to look at because the next step is that you want to analyze that data. So maybe you're going to put it in a graph. Maybe you're going to have it in a nice data table. You need to be able to find a way to see what's going on in your experiment. And then the next thing is to make a conclusion. And so you are going to determine whether you are supporting your hypothesis or if you can disprove your hypothesis by your experiment. And um, one thing that comes up a lot of times is a lot of people will say something like, oh, well, I have this theory that Johnny likes Susie because Johnny keeps hitting Susie, so he must like her. He's trying to get her attention. But when you say I have a theory, in science, that's not the definition of theory. So um, what we're going to do first is define these different words. So hypothesis is an educated guess. So basically think about it as your inferences that you make based on your observations. So it's a guess about what you think is going to happen in your experiment. Next, it needs to be testable. You need to be able to see whether your hypothesis can be supported or if it can be disproved. And so you need to test your hypothesis. And again, it can only be supported or disproved. You can never prove a hypothesis because someone later can come and disprove it. A theory is an idea supported by a large amount of evidence over a period of time. It cannot be tested. And an example of a theory is Einstein's theory of relativity. Next is a law. A law is a scientific fact, and laws can be proven. An example of this is the law of conservation of energy. So is a hypothesis the same thing as a theory? No. So a hypothesis, remember, is just a guess based on your experiment. It's a prediction that you are making that of what you think might happen. A theory is something that's an idea that's out there that's supported by a huge amount of evidence and lots of different types of evidence over a period of time and it cannot be tested. Alright, so next, how to write a hypothesis. So when we're doing our labs in this class, you are going to be writing out a hypothesis every time. And we use what's called an if-and-then statement. 
and it's written like this. So if the IV is related to the DV, and what are you going to do in the experiment, then state what you think will specifically happen and why, if possible. So this is just kind of the general format, and it looks a little weird here. This isn't a real hypothesis, but this is kind of your sentence frame that you're going to use when you're writing a hypothesis. And this is the same in biology and chemistry and human biology and physics and biotechnology, AP bio, AP physics, AP chem, integrated science, all science classes here at Karma use this format. So this is something that you're going to need to learn to practice and to do. So we need to figure out what IV and DV means. Um, the V in IV and DV stands for variable. A variable is anything that can change in a given situation. So time, speed, temperature, mass, etc. An example is that I want you to look at to figure out what the variables in the sentence are is the time it takes a person to run a kilometer depends upon the amount of exercise the person gets. So what is changing in this statement? Okay, one thing that changes is the time it takes to run a kilometer. Because someone might run a kilometer in, I don't know, 30 seconds. Some people might run it in 10 minutes. Okay, that's not real numbers. I'm just using it, those as an example. Um, next, um, the next thing that changes is the amount of exercise that a person gets. So um, someone might not exercise at all. Someone must might sit on the couch all the time. Or someone might get up and run like five miles every day. So the amount of exercise they get depends or d determines probably how fast they're able to run that kilometer. So those are variables. Anything that can change. Next is the independent variable. So the I is independent. And this is something that you manipulate or that you can change. So it's what you control, what you are going to change in the experiment. Next is the DV, the dependent variable. And this is the variable that responds. It's going to change based on what happens to the independent variable. Okay, so an example. So if I flip the switch, the light will turn on. In this statement, what are the variables? What is changing? Okay, first, the first thing that's changing is whether I flip the switch or not. So if it's switched on or off. And then what changes as a result is whether the light is on or off. So those are our two variables. So now we need to think about what is the independent variable. What do I have control over? Okay, do I have control over the light being on? Or do I have control over the switch? So the independent variable is the switch, um, either if I flip it up or if I flipped it down. The dependent variable is what happens as a result. So when I turn the switch up, it's going to turn on. When I flip the switch down, the light will turn off. So IV, flipping the switch, DV, the light turning on. Okay, so let's write out a hypothesis. So you saw that weird sentence frame. Now let's write a real hypothesis. So the first thing you need to do is after you make your observations, you're going to have a question. So maybe you've made observations that you and your friends, um, your teenagers, and some of you guys have lots of pimples, and some of you have heard that eating chocolate causes more pimples. So that's your question. Next, you're going to come up with your variables. So the two variables here, the things that change is the amount of chocolate someone eats and how many pimples you get. So the independent variable, what you have control over, is how much chocolate you eat. You either eat none, you eat a little bit, or you eat a lot. The dependent variable is what changes as a result. So the dependent variable would be the number of pimples that you have. So again, here is our sentence frame. If the IV is related to the DV, and what are you going to do in the experiment, then state what you think will specifically happen and why, if possible. So if eating chocolate, I'm going to plug in eating chocolate from up above into that space. So if eating chocolate is related to the DV, the amount of pimples, and three students eat um, varying amounts of chocolate for two weeks, then the student who eats the most chocolate is going to have the most pimples. The student who has no chocolate will have no pimples. So 
In this experiment, I plugged in the IV and the DV, and then I said what I'm going to do in the experiment. So I am going to test it out with three different students. One's going to have no chocolate, one will have some, and the other will have a lot. Then I will state what I think is going to happen. So that's my prediction. So I predict that the student who eats the most chocolate is going to get the most pimples. The student who eats none won't get any, and then the one in the middle will have a medium amount of pimples after those two weeks. So um, this is going to be kind of a long sentence, but it's what your prediction is and what you're going to do as you do your lab or your um, experiment. So now it's time to practice the scientific method. You are going to do some work with variables and hypotheses. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.